All right, so welcome to the second video where we're talking about pandas. Today we're going to talk about selecting subsets of data. So often you've got a bunch of data with different values and columns and you want to select some subset of that for visualization or analytics or saying, you know, this is the amount I have a lot of data and this is the subset that I'm interested in. And we're going to talk about some of the different mechanisms that pandas provides for that. So the first simple one is if you treat a data frame like a dictionary and you give it a string, what that does is select a column by name. And then we can use the head method to give just the first few results. This is often useful for peeking at something. So what this says is give me the start time column and the first five entries. If you give it a list of strings that lets you subset columns, so here we've asked for a data frame where we just have the start time and end time columns, excluding the columns that we're not interested in. You can also use the lock accessor attribute to access on the index, so the row IDs or row labels, and also on the columns at the same time. So here we're saying these two columns and these rows. And we can also use the iLock to, which is like lock, but it uses index positions instead of index values. So you can use iLock to say, give me the first five rows and the first two columns, for instance. So this is, it's the same as lock, but instead of using the actual values and column names, it's using the location, the integer indices in those entries. So next we wanna select based on values and columns. So you can also, in addition to passing column names, you can also pass as a mask to a data frame. You can pass any series of Boolean values that has the same index as the data frame itself or the series that you're interested in. So here we're saying, show me if you do comparisons, instead of, if you were comparing with just a number, if you do these equalities, just like with NumPy, instead of doing that, getting true or false, it does it element-wise. So if you do that for a series, it takes the start station series and does an element-wise comparison and gives you a new series with the same index that has Boolean true or false for whether each item in that series is equal to 283 in this case. And so we can commute the sum of that to say how many values are true. So of the 240,000 entries, 1,000 use this start station. And we can pass that series of Booleans to get item to say, give me all the trips where that is true. So this gives us a data frame that's a subset of the data and its length is the number of cases where that's true and the start station is gonna be the same for, for all of them. We can also do complex arithmetic. You can do any amount of operations that results in a series of Booleans that then that can be your mask that you pass to get a subset of data. So here we're computing the durations by taking the end time column and subtracting the start time column. So now durations is a series of time delta objects. So a series of durations so nine minutes, 10 minutes, etc. We can take that series and use the quantile function. So This gives you just like the median would be the, the quantile with 0 0.5, the 50th percentile. This gives us the 90th percentile. So this means that 10% of the durations are above this value and 90% are below this value. So we can create the Boolean series saying take durations and then give true when the duration is greater than the 90th percentile and false where it's less than that. So this will select 10% of our trips. This will be true 10% of the time and false 90% of the time. And then we pass that Boolean series as a mask and this gives us the top 10% of trips by duration. So these trips are all uh, a bit longer. Pandas has a lot of really useful convenience things for working with dates and date time things. So durations is a time series of time delta objects. So we can give it a string saying, give me all the trips where the duration is greater than one day. And that's not gonna be very many. Right? So this is people who kept out a bike for at least a day. And that only happened 300 times out of 240,000. Remember in the last video, we had the issue where end station is a float because there are some empty values where the end station is not known. We can say, show me all the rows where that was true. So take the trips where end station is not a number, right? And this gives us a few rows from where the end station is not known. So we could also use this to remove those values if we want. Pandas also gives you convenience methods for taking a series that has datetime objects, that there are some handy ways for accessing information about those fields if they are a datetime. So we can say, give me the weekday as an integer. So zero from Monday and seven for Sunday. And these will just cycle through in order because it's sorted by, by date. And you can do really complex combinations by using Python bitwise and and bitwise or operators. So we can say, find all the late night trips by saying, give me all the trips where the start time, the hour is at least 22 for 10 p.m., or 
the start time is less than or equal to three, so that's before 4 a.m. And this gives us all of the late night trips. You can see there's only there's only 235 trips, so people aren't checking out bikes in the middle of the night all that often. The next operation we do, where we're this is related to this selecting based on values and columns, is something called group by. Just like in this case, we were only interested in this subset of hours. What if we wanted to take all the slices of the day and create groups? based on that. So it's just like doing these filters, but you're doing several different filters and ensuring that all together you're collecting all of your data. So if we group by start station, the first thing you notice is that instead of seeing a data frame, you just see this, you've given me a group by object. And that's because group by operations can be really, really expensive, especially if you have a lot of data. And Pandas tries to be clever and say, not actually do the computation until it absolutely has to. So here we're asking for the end station column after grouping by start station. And here we're still uh, a view because it doesn't actually compute the result uh, until you've asked for an aggregation on that data. And that way it can do it as efficiently as possible by figuring out what filtering and grouping that you're doing so that it can avoid doing unnecessary computation that can be very expensive. So here we're saying count the end station values for each start station. And then what we get is for each start station, we have the number of trips that started at that start station. And the end station is not actually meaningful here. It's just because this would be the same for any column. So this is counting the number of trips per start station. Value counts is an aggregator that says given a series, take each unique value and count the number of times that value occurs. So it's saying group by start station, take the end station values and then count them. And this tells you for each start station, which is the most popular end station for that start station. This is a two level index now. For start, this is grouped by start station, and then only considering the cases where that's the start, show me the counts of all of the end stations given that start station, and it does that for each start. So we can select based on one of these values by saying compute this and then give me the value counts only for that start station, and then we're back into a series. So that's just this, this subset series for only station 157. We can also group by the number of trips that start on a given day of the week. So this lets us count the start time by the weekday, and we can see that we get the most trips on Mondays, and it's pretty flat for most of the weekdays. It drops a little bit on Saturday, um, and then drops quite a lot on Sunday, so people don't take the bikes out as much on Sunday. And if we access a series after that, that just gets one of these columns because the values are actually the same. There's a little bit of variation in end station because this is the one that has not a number of values. So these numbers are a little bit smaller because the not a numbers don't count. So we can combine all of this into a more complex operation where we group by day. So this is a group by of just the days, but we can also pass group by a list. So we can group by not just one thing, but we can group by multiple values. And this gives us a multi-level index. So we're saying group by the weekday. And then after grouping by the weekday, group by whether the trip ended on the same day. So this is collecting the overnight trips by the day the trip started. And then we can print, show me the fraction, a percent notation of each of those. So here we have a two-level index of the weekday and whether the trip ended on the same day or not as a fraction of the total number of trips. So I'll break down these different steps in the next couple cells. So we can see, you know, 99%, almost all the trips start and end on the same day. We can see that actually Sunday and Saturday, you know, on the weekend are when the most trips go over into the next day. So if we break down into those steps, we can create the by day group and just count the number of trips per day. So by grouping on both the day and whether it's a same day trip or an overnight trip, we get this multi-level index where the first level is the day of the week and the second level is true or false for whether the trip started and ended on the same day or the, the few overnight trips. And next we can divide our grouped counts by our totals by day and get the start station column. So that's just this column normalized so that each one has a sum to one. And Pandas is smart that it knows that since even though this data frame has a multi-level index, and this data frame has a single level index because one of those levels matches, Pandas knows how to do the alignment to say Tuesday is divided by the total for Tuesday, etc. And then we get the fractional numbers instead of the absolute numbers. And finally, we take all of that and format them as a percent by passing the float format argument to the two string method. And so that's our tour of selecting and filtering Pandas data uh, and doing manipulations on it. And next we're gonna move on to visualization where we're gonna apply some of uh, these principles and grouping and filtering and selecting and visualizing subsets of that data, all right? So far, we've been just looking at data frames as tables and series, but often you can visualize a lot more data in the form of a chart and Pandas has a lot of utilities 
for plotting the data and formatting it nicely and sensibly based on the types. So for instance, we can pass the start time column, just get that series and call plot, and pandas will do its best to try to make a sensible plot based on what you've given it. So you can often just call the plot function on a data frame or a series, and it will produce a pretty reasonable result. So you can see the start time is just going up and up and up, and we can see these little jumps are basically overnight when not that many trips are being started. You can plot multiple columns by subsetting the data frame. So we did this earlier where we're asking for only the time columns. We're using head to say, take the first 100 points and then plot, and there we get two columns. With the two columns, we get two lines. When you've got more than one line, Pandas automatically creates a legend with the column names. And here we can see the start times, which are uniformly distributed, and the end times where you can see that there are some long trips in there and some short trips. And someone kept a bike for a really long time here. And you can specify a column to use for the x-axis, not just the index. So it uses the index by default. We can say use this column for the, the x-axis and this column for the y-axis. And here I'm making a scatter plot where the x-axis is the start station, the y-axis is the end station, and the color is going to be the time. So here the blue dots are the points early in the month, and the yellow dots are the points late in the month, and we can see this diagonal are the trips that started and ended in the same place, and we can see as you go away from diagonal, these are trips from one station to another station. There are lots and lots of plotting options, and you can pass the question mark to pandas, or check out the pandas documentation for plotting. There's lots and lots of controls for how to plot. You can do bar charts, scatter charts, line charts, area charts, all kinds of things, and lots and lots of options to play with. So here we're going to take the first 10 rows, plot with the start time on the x-axis, and the y-axis is going to be the start station and end station, we're going to make a bar chart. So you're just taking first 10 trips, saying they started at this station and ended at this station. And so okay, this trip started and ended at the same station, and the height's not particularly meaningful, it's just showing which stations they're going to and from. Histograms let you take all the unique values and collect them into bins. So here is start station, create a histogram of which are the most popular stations or station ranges. So it by default creates 10 bins. You can also specify what the bins are. So this count the number of occurrences in each bin. So here I'm taking the start time and asking for the hour from the date time data, creating a histogram plot and using the hours as bins. So rather than picking 10 bins, I'm explicitly saying create a bin for every hour. And here I use 25 because you need both the left edge of the first bin, so that's zero, and you also need the right edge of the last bin. So here we have 24 hours, so we actually need to go from zero to 24 to catch everything for the left-hand side and the right-hand side. So we can see that a lot of people pick up bikes for their morning commute, and then there's a more spread out spike. So a lot of people get the bikes in the afternoon, but maybe commutes and leisure trips and things are much more spread out. So morning commutes are very focused around 6, 7 a.m., and then the afternoon is a lot more spread out, and not a lot of bikes being checked out very overnight. We can also do the same thing, by instead of taking the hour, we take the weekday, and we can see we computed the same information with the group by, but now we can have a more intuitive view of the same information. We can see it's relatively flat through the week, a few more trips on Monday, and a few fewer on Friday, and then a bit of a drop for Saturday, and a bigger drop for Sunday. And we can import the calendar to get weekdays. So now we can combine the data that we had before of grouping by uh, weekday. This is our true-false data for overnight trips with our count metric, get the start station series. Unstack takes our multi-level index. Let's actually extract this and see it as a table. So it takes our multi-level index and takes the level of that index and then promotes those to column names. So we unstack that and then we plot it as a bar chart and then we use weekday names for our X label. And here we've got a bar chart of total trips and the orange bar is the trips that ended on the same day. And then very, very thin at the bottom in blue are the trips that were overnight. And so we can also select that column by doing the same chart, but specifically picking out the false values. And then we just see the number of trips that are overnight. We can see relatively flat on weekdays, but then a little bit more, maybe 50% more of overnight trips on Saturday and Sunday. And that's it for this tour of collecting data, subsetting data, and then plotting based on those subsets. So sometimes you want to only take a subset of data, sometimes you want to take all the subsets, so group by a subsetting scheme, whether it's by weekdays or values or bins, and then using that to make charts.